Welcome back. We are in this uh, unit on concepts. Last time we defined concepts. Uh, the first act of the mind or the first act of understanding by which we grasp the essential nature or the essential feature of a thing or the general meaning of a thing. Um, now we're going to move on and talk about what concepts are not. So I'm going back to the handout. I'm looking at number nine and I have a, a paper copy here that I'm also looking at. All right, so concepts are not the following. So I, I would like you to uh, think about contrasting concepts, which are the mind grasping the essential feature of a thing with these other things that are not concepts because we often get very confused. Concepts are in the mind. These are not in the mind in the same way. I don't know, we'll have to just go through it. All right, so concepts are contrasted with the following, which are not concepts. The first is a percept. So a concept is not a percept. A percept is an act of the senses, which is particular to the person. Perception. So something that comes in through seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. These are percepts, okay? Um, these are an act of the senses, not an act of reason, and they are particular to the person who is perceiving. So sometimes we say, that's my perception. Um, well, if we're talking about seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, that's right. It is your perception and that is subjective. It's not a concept. A concept is not an image. An image is an act of the perception. It's going beyond the percept now, which is uh, particular to a specific thing. Um, oftentimes in class I have a coffee cup on my desk because I like to drink coffee and uh, I ask all of the students here, I'll use, I have a water bottle here. All right, so here's the water bottle. I put it on the desk and I ask everyone in the class to look at the water bottle. So imagine you're looking at the water bottle. This is not working because imagination is different than actually seeing, right? So I say, everyone look at the water bottle, and we notice that everyone has a different perception of the water bottle based on where they are in the room and based on their, their own body chemistry, their own, um, their own sensory uh, faculties. Some people wear glasses, some people are colorblind, some people can't hear. Um, so our... Uh, all right, so then going back to the water bottle, an image is uh, specific to that particular water bottle on the desk. We have an image of that water bottle. Um, whereas a concept would be, we have the idea of all water bottles, what all bo water bottles always have that they, uh, they only have and which makes them different from non-water bottles, okay? So an image is an act of the perception which is particular to a specific thing, that particular water bottle on my desk. Okay, a feeling is not the same as a concept. What are feelings? Um, this is not even the same as an emotion. Feelings could be an association of an image of a thing and a sensation. The feeling of um, the breeze. The feeling of, oh, how about this? Uh, since it's connected to associations, when you're watching images on the screen of the television, they could em evoke feelings, right? Uh, what about the surgery channel? Did you know there was a show, uh, a channel where they wa they do surgeries or shows of surgeries? Uh, I know this because I saw this at my mother's house once. And... Uh, blood on TV could cause you to have the association of pain, right? It's just an image, but we're associating that image with sensations that, that we can imagine. So this is not the same as a co uh, concepts. Uh, feelings, the association of an image of a thing with a sensation is distinct from concepts. Um, and, it, and it may be that animals have feelings, association, I know my, my animals do. They associate a lot of things with sensations. Words oftentimes are associated with sensations. And then 
Concepts are not orderly behavior of a thing. Uh, there's lots of sources of orderly behavior. Lots of things are behaving orderly, like your computer usually, hopefully, is behaving orderly. The human heart, um, bees, some, uh, some animals are, are behaving orderly. Mine are behaving mostly orderly right now. So, but does that, is that the same as concepts? Is that the same as thinking? No, is your computer thinking? Hmm, I know what you're thinking. All right, so uh, concepts are not percepts, they're not images, they're not a feeling, they're not orderly behavior. Keep that in your mind, um, write it down, put it in your long-term memory. This is important to understand what thinking is by contrasting it with what it is not. Okay, concepts, how do we evaluate them? They're evaluated by their meaning. Either one has grasped the general meaning of a thing or the essential nature of a thing, or one has not. Either you grasp it or you don't. We may use words without understanding their meaning, which shows that we have not understood or grasped the concept. Remember the story of Socrates and how he was asking that question, what is justice? Here's a word that people were using, but they didn't understand the meaning of it. They hadn't grasped the concept. Much of Socrates' work was trying to grasp concepts. What is beauty? What is justice? What is knowledge? What is the good life? He wanted to know the meaning of those words. What is the reality that those words stand for? And that's what we're concerned with as well. All right, now let's move on to the next point. Failure to adequately grasp concepts is one of the primary areas human communication becomes problematic. All right, so if we are using words and we don't agree on the meaning of those words, we will miscommunicate, we will misunderstand one another. And guess what this will lead to? Frustration and ultimately a breakdown in the dialogue. So asking ourselves, what does X mean? And seeking greater understanding of a concept is a way of avoiding this problem. And we should honestly try to understand. Um, sometimes when we're discussing with people, we, we automatically disagree and we aren't interested in understanding what they're saying anymore. Um, this is going to take the virtue of humility and the virtue of curiosity. Are you curious to understand? Are you seeking to understand? So it will take uh, motivation. We have to be motivated to understand. What if, the, what if knowledge was a good that uh, should be pursued as an end in itself? Like when you know, you just have a kind of intellectual pleasure. What if that was the reason for, for pursuing understanding? All right, let's go on to number 12. Failure to, greet, failure to agree on the meaning of words or terms that we use in conversation is one of the primary areas human communication becomes problematic. Seeking mutual agreement on the definition of words or terms we use is a way of avoiding this problem. So we might just have to pause a lot of times and say, you use this word human being. What does that mean? Um, I wish I could have just interjected and told all those friends on Facebook to pause when they're having this conversation about abortion. Pause. You are using this word human? What do you mean? Um, I can see that you, you disagree on this term, but, but you haven't, you know, worked out your definition and come to a mutual agreement yet. Um, that takes a lot of work. I would say coming to agreement on the meaning of words is maybe where a lot of work needs to be done and it has been neglected. So um, this will require a virtue of patience, the patient pursuit of understanding. First, we start with meaning. Now, I know you want to know about the animals too, don't you? Do animals think? All right, before we get to that, let's look at what you should be able to take from this discussion. You should explain, be able to explain how we form concepts, we should be able to explain the essential features of a thing, explain how concepts are universal, explain the three divisions of words, 
And what are concepts contrasted with? What are they not? All right, now um, I'm going to present you with an argument. I guess I should probably type this up. Ooh, I can't type on this as a PDF. All right, well, then you'll just have to hold it in your mind. I will give you an argument. All right, here's, here's the argument. Um, the, the, the question, do animals think, is the same as do animals have concepts, all right? So if animals could think, then they would have the same concepts as we do. So here's the argument. And, and an argument, remember, has two premises and a conclusion, usually sometimes, sometimes with more or less. But the major premise of this argument says, if animals could think, then we could communicate with them as with other human beings, okay? If animals could think, we could communicate with them as with other human beings. How do we communicate with other human beings? Through concepts, okay? We cannot communicate with animals as we do with other human beings. This is the minor premise. We cannot communicate with animals as with other human beings. Now, this is a controversial premise. This premise requires support. You need a reason for saying that. Why not? Um, so here's, here's the reason for saying we can't communicate with them as with other human beings. We communicate with other human beings through concepts, and concepts are universal for all thinking beings. And if animals had concepts, the only difference between us and them would be one of language. Okay, we have a different language, maybe. Um, but uh, I think it's, it's a greater barrier with animals than with other human beings. I mean, I could go to, I can go to China and communicate with, with other human beings there through concepts, even though I don't know Chinese. I could learn Chinese, um, but uh, is there such a thing as doggies or catties or dolphinies or chimpanzees? I know you're gonna get me on that one, right? Um, is Coco the gorilla communicating ideas or is Coco communicating feelings through association of words with sensations? All right, the conclusion then, uh, the conclusion of this argument is, uh, therefore, animals do not think, all right? Major premise again, if animals could think, we would communicate with them. We could communicate with them as with other human beings. Minor premise, we cannot communicate with animals as with other human beings. Conclusion, therefore, animals don't think. Um, this argument form is called modus tollens, and it is a valid argument form um, is it sound? Are the premises true? If the major premise and the minor premise are true, then the conclusion is necessarily true. So it's your job now to examine the argument and see if these premises are true. Um, but now, now we should also think of the implications. If animals do think, then there's no essential difference between humans and animals, which means probably we shouldn't cage them up or eat them or make them into couches or purses or shoes. So one of the ethical implications. Uh, is there a distinction between humans and animals? And is that distinction that humans are rational animals and animals are sentient animals? This is what Aristotle thought. He thought there was an essential difference. All right, but it's for you to think about now, critically analyze and uh, maybe talk to your friends about it and see what happens.